In today's video, we're comparing the Viltrox 75mm f1.2 to the stalwart Fujifilm 1655 2.8. What's up everyone, Pete Coco here and thanks as always for joining me. I have a Viltrox 75mm f1.2 lens on loan from my friends at B&H Photo and I'm test driving it now for my upcoming full review. In the meantime, I wanted to do a quick test and see how the Viltrox compares to my favorite Fuji lens, the 16 to 55 2.8. Now, as always, keep in mind that this is a friendly comparison for our mutual edification. And although I do my best to try and keep my testing fair, I'm sure some of you will find faults with my methods. After we check out the comparison images though, I will show you a few portraits that I've taken so far with the Viltrox at my studio and give you a bit of a preview of my full review. So stay tuned because you don't wanna miss that. Let's talk about my test methods. For this test, I set the camera up on a tripod at ISO 400. I used the 16 to 55 at 55 millimeters and I took images at F2.8, 5.6 and f11 on both lenses. In order to avoid any shifts in focus, I used a precision focusing point and made sure that it was aimed in the exact same spot on the red book jacket in the center of my frame. I also took one image at f1.2 with the Viltrox because I thought it would be cool to compare both lenses wide open. Okay, so let's check out some of the images together with the Viltrox lens on the left and the Fuji lens on the right. First, let's look at both images at f2.8. When we zoom into the center of the image, the Fuji is clearly sharper and has better contrast. As we scroll to the left edge of the frame and zoom in on my Fuji film box, the Viltrox actually looks a bit more crisp. As we move up and check out my globe, the Fuji seems to edge out the Viltrox, but just by a hair. If we go to the other side of the frame and look at Mr. Data, it's pretty close between the two lenses. So at 2.8, the Fuji's definitely better in the middle, but at the edges, it's kind of a trade-off depending on where you are. Let's look at 5.6 now. At 5.6, things get much more interesting because the Viltrox actually looks a touch sharper on the red book binding, which is where I placed the focusing point. At the center of the frame, both lenses actually look very, very good. And both are super sharp with good contrast and color. As we scroll away from the center, it's tough to see any major differences. Although again, at the edge, when I hover over my globe, the Viltrox seems to edge out the Fuji, but just by a hair. I would say that at 5.6, both lenses do an admirable job with contrast and detail. Again, at f11, things are very interesting because in the center of the image, it's hard to tell which is which. If we scroll to the Fujifilm box on the bottom left side once again, the Fuji probably looks a touch sharper, but to my eye, it's pretty difficult to notice any major difference in the quality of each lens. The same is true when scrolling around my globe as both have similar detail sharpness and both have good contrast. Finally, let's compare both lenses at their maximum aperture. Now, wide open, the results are again close, but the Fuji is the clear winner here in the center of the image with more detail and less of a sort of hazy look. If we look at the aperture values on my Olympus XA in the bottom right corner, however, the difference is again less noticeable and the Viltrox looks like it might be a tad sharper. The same is true on my film box on the bottom left side. One other interesting thing that I noticed in all of my images is that the silver camera bookend has quite a bit more detail in all of the Fuji images than in the Viltrox ones. And it shows more fingerprints and dust for some reason. Okay, well, there you have it. Now, I think that the Fuji does win out because in the center at all apertures, it's very sharp, but it does of course depend on the aperture you're using. 
At 5.6, both lenses look very good. And at f11, the Viltrox is really impressive when compared to the Fuji. At this point, I want to remind you that this is just a friendly comparison, and I'm happy to hear feedback in the comments below regarding how I've compared these images, even if you want to tell me why this was a terrible way to test them. Okay, now let's look at a few images that I captured at my studio with the X-T5 and the Viltrox 75 millimeter. Check out this picture of my photographer friend Alex, which I shot wide open at f1.2 using a parallel lighting setup for a sort of Martin Scholler look. Check out the incredible detail wide open. And if you follow my channel or my work, you know that I love to shoot wide open. Now here I focused on his camera right eye and it truly is wonderfully sharp. But besides this, the image has really excellent contrast and color and dynamic range too. To me, the Viltrox is easily handling the X-T5's 40 megapixel sensor and doing an admirable job resolving all of that detail. Next, check out this photo of my bandmate Jesse, lit with one Westcott flex panel, again wide open at f1.2. Here, there's once again plenty of detail and the dynamic range is awesome. Look how much I can pull out the shadows if I so desire. And the image not only preserves a ton of detail, but it doesn't get that sort of fake look that you sometimes get when you pull out a lot of shadows. All right, guys, I have a lot more to say about this lens, but these two photos will give you at least an idea of what's to come with my full lens review. So far, I'm really impressed with the Viltrox as a portrait photographer, and it's definitely very appealing to me for the kind of work I like to do, especially because I'm always shooting sort of wide or, or completely wide open for a lot of my portrait work. But you're gonna have to wait for my full review to get details on the lenses autofocus, build quality, lots more to say about the image quality and much more. Well, that's all I have for you today, my friends. Thank you as always for joining me on my crazy photographic journeys. And make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you like videos like this so I can keep making more. And drop me a comment, let me know what you think. If you are ready to buy a Viltrox 75 1.2, I would greatly appreciate if you use the link in the description below. And you can also click on my B&H gear page below to see all of the equipment that I use in my photo studio. Once again, this lens is on loan from B&H, so I wanna thank them for loaning it to me so I can do this test. Here's wishing you an awesome day. Go out and take some great pictures, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. <music>